This is your space pod for Thursday. I am joined by our astronomer, Jared Head, here to talk to us about some exoplanets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to talk about some really cool things that we found with one specific exoplanet going around a star. So formation of systems around stars is what we call nebular theory. And this basically says that after all the gas and dust has collapsed in and started nuclear fusion, which is when a star officially becomes a star, uh, it says that after that, any remaining gas and dust around the star should form like asteroids and comets and maybe planets, and that should be proportional in size to the star itself. Well, we took a look at a star with a special telescope used by the European Southern Observatory, and it was conducted by the University of Warwick, and they have challenged this finding by finding a hot Jupiter-type exoplanet around an M-class red dwarf star. Now, the system is known as NGTS-1, named after the telescope uh, that the European Southern Observatory actually takes a look at it with. It's about 600 light years away, and the planet NGTS-1b is about 80% the mass of Jupiter, and it orbits its star once every 2.6 days. Now, that current nebular theory says that red stars are significantly more likely to make rocky planets, but here is a hot Jupiter orbiting one. Now, what is so cool about this study, besides the fact that it's sort of flying in the face of nebular theory, uh, is that this was the first time we actually found an exoplanet around a red dwarf star via the transit method with the NGTS telescope that we have a really awesome photo of right here. Now, the transit method is when the planet blocks the light from a star. You see a dip in the light. We see a, the curve actually go down and then come back up. Previous discoveries of exoplanets around red dwarfs like TRAPPIST-1 were actually done by what we call radial velocity. That means we literally looked at the star wiggling back and forth from the gravitational pull of the exoplanets orbiting around it. This is also really exciting because red dwarf stars, they make up 75% of the stellar population in the Milky Way and likely the universe itself as well. So this tells us that the most numerous population of stars in our own galaxy can actually have a multitude of planetary flavors around it. And this is really important because if we're going to really actually start looking at exoplanets, resolving them, actually being able to get their light instead of the overwhelming light of the star around them, it's very important for us to understand uh, the type of planets that we should expect around there and also look at our modeling of nebular theory and see if we can actually do some type of a model that can explain this. And that is what is so cool um, about finding things that are outside of our predicted models is that we can then go in and actually modify our models. And then when we modify our models, we get an even better understanding of what's actually happening around that star. So it's really cool stuff happening with uh, with exoplanets with that tiny little telescope the European Southern Observatory is using. So. Man, and exoplanets aren't even that old from a discovery standpoint, right? I mean, yeah, uh, I mean theorized uh, since antiquity, um, if you will, but discovered uh, really in the early '90s, late '80s, early '90s. Depends on which organization you you ask. So. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Jared. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like that news, make sure to like and subscribe this channel. Make sure to hit subscribe and the little notification icon on YouTube so that you get notifications of our live shows that happen every Saturday at 1800 Coordinating Universal Time. This last week, we talked with the Brooke Owens Fellows. It was really great. Click over here to watch that video.